also thought this might be a little bit of fun. This isn't an exhaustive list of Micro Four Thirds cameras because we would be here all day. These are just ones that I've either owned or heavily researched and things that I know and love. If there's any that you think I miss rank or any that I've missed that you would like to add rankings in of your own, just let me know in the comments and we can have a little chat about it. Let me get my green screen. I hate this bit. I'm never getting that down again. Such a professional. So let's start with the Lumix G7. It's the first Lumix camera that I ever bought and it was my gateway drug into video. This channel appeared, the rest is history. There are a couple of things that make that camera a little bit tricky. It is plastic fantastic and it is not stabilized and it's not weather sealed. But the video features are fantastic that stand up today. You've got an audio input. It's absolutely brilliant for photos. I got some great photos with this camera in the past. So I'm going to put it in blooming brilliant. The Olympus EM5, the OG. This is one of my favorite everyday carries. It's built like a tank with a magnesium alloy body. It was so ahead of its time. It's the first weather sealed Micro Four Thirds camera to my knowledge, and it's tiny and it's beautiful and it's very, very affordable now. So all of those things combined, I'm sticking it in the God tier. I'm sticking it in the best of the best, baby. The Lumix GX80. I fell in love with this camera when I owned it. It's stabilized, it's small, it has an EVF. It's so, so good. Of course I sold it because I'm a blooming idiot. And this is how, oh, my green screen's up. You can't actually see my cameras. This is how I end up with all the cameras behind me because it's things like this where I regret selling something that makes me never sell anything ever again. It's one that's on my radar that I want to buy again. I regret selling it. It's got to go in blooming brilliant. The Pen F, another one that I regret selling. Let's not muck about. It's one of the best, if not the best, Micro Four Thirds cameras, photocentric cameras ever made. So yeah, it's going straight in the God tier. Not messing about. Next, this was a camera that I was considering buying because it had phase detect autofocus and some other bits and bobs when it first came out. But for this reason alone, <laughs> <laughs> the absolute heck and chunk and size of it. The Olympus EM1X with its non-removable grip. I'm sorry, it's a Micro Four Thirds camera. It has no right to be that big. People say the G9 Mark II is big. Look at the state of this. This is a crime against mm. photography. The Lumix G80. This is the camera that my dad used when we went to the Faroe Islands together. He got some amazing images. It was weather sealed. It's got a nice grip. It's still very portable. Absolutely brilliant. I think it's such an underrated camera because I feel like the G9 sort of stole its thunder a little bit. So I'm going to put it in good for certain things. Now, hear me out. It is good for certain things because it is rugged, it is light, but it isn't quite small enough to be sort of an everyday everything carry sort of camera and it's not the best at video either. The Olympus PL6, my little red camera of joy. I took this around Munich and had a whale of a time and it has its eccentricities as all old Olympus cameras do but it's built like a tank, it's stylish, it, it takes fantastic photos. It's very one note, I think it's a great everyday carry for photos so I'm going to put it in good for certain things. The Lumix GH5. It's going in the god tier guys. This was the camera that changed my life. I had some amazing photos. It taught me how to do video. I ran my wedding business around it for my wedding films for many years. It is amazing. I want to be buried with that camera and I'm not even joking. <laughs> the Olympus OM1. Stunning, stunning camera. And I like that it's a little bit smaller than the G9 Mark II. I think it's fantastic for wildlife. The video features aren't terrible. They're not the best, but it's not really what that camera is about. I'm sticking this in blooming brilliant. This is a controversial one, the Lumix GH6. Now, I love this camera and when I first got it, I just thought, yep, yeah, it's the best Micro Four Thirds camera that's ever been made. I took it to the Faroe Islands, it's great for photo, amazing for video. But then when the G9 Mark II came out, there's so much crossover. For me, I think the G9 Mark II is actually a better camera. For video-centric people, the GH6 is probably the best option, but for my needs, I'm going to stick this in good for certain things. It pains me to do it, but it's the truth. But I do love it, and I regret selling it. The OM System OM5. 
Now this has phase detect. It's absolutely gorgeous. Aesthetically, it looks very similar to the EM5, except we don't have the metal build quality. You do have some pretty good video features. You have stabilization. You have all the lovely computational features like live composite mode and starry sky. It's cracking. I think it was a little bit of like a, a stepping stone in the OM system lineup because I wish it had the menus from the OM1, which are much, much more intuitive than the old school Olympus menus. I don't think it's God tier. I think if they bring out a new one with the new menus and a little few more bells and whistles, I think it could be God tier eventually. But as it stands, I'm going to put it in blooming brilliant. This is the Olympus Air. Now, I bought this m maybe a year ago to review as part of my tiny camera series because I love me a weird camera. And this is basically a sensor. That's it. You stick a lens on it. You can attach it to a camera or you can use it standalone. I've had a nightmare with this because it won't work with modern phones and it's 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 an abomination it's a crime against photography mm. until i can get it working it's a crime against photography the lumix g9 baby g what a legend this was what i imagine a lot of photographers i want to be buried with this camera camera is you know like the gh5 just stole my heart i think the g9 will have done that for people that are very photo centric i used it recently in kenya for a day and oh it's lovely it has the most sensitive half press shutter i've ever felt on any camera in my entire life <laughs> But aside from that, it's rugged, it's amazing, and I do think it will be a lot of people's best camera ever. I'm sticking it in god tier, baby. It's going all the way to the top. Controversial, the Olympus EM10. Now, this is the original that I'm talking about, but the whole lineup to me confuses me. I mean, aside from the price difference when these things were new, I understand that it's like a, a lower tiered EM5. You don't have weather sealing, it's not as good. And I just think they look identical. Like this is an EM5, this is an EM10. I don't think there's enough between them to both warrant a place in existence. <laughs> so I'm sticking the EM10 in uninspiring. If you're looking at an EM10, just buy an EM5. The Lumix G9 Mark II, let's not muck about. In my opinion, it's the best Micro Four Thirds camera that money can buy, it's going in the God tier. It's phenomenal for video, it's phenomenal for photo, it's made me not like my GH6, it's that good. So yeah, god tier. This is the Lumix G100. I've had some strong opinions on this camera in the past, but I think it is very small, it's a very fun everyday carry. You do have some pretty decent video features, you do have a mic input, you do not have stabilization, which is my main sticking point, but I do think it's pretty good. Also, it's very plastic. I've already smashed the bottom of this just by taking it on and off a tripod. It's flawed, but if you want a light everyday carry, like if I go for a long walk, that's the camera that I'll just sort of stick on my bag because it's so, so light. I think it's good for certain things. Just probably not video. The next camera is a camera that I very nearly bought and didn't in the end, which, for, which I will explain why. The Olympus PL10. This came out in 2019 and when it was announced I was like, oh is this what the Micro Four Thirds community has always wanted? A small photocentric camera that has all the bells and whistles that we want. No, it's not. They had the audacity to call this an entry-level camera, but then charge like 700 quid for it. I don't get it. Pick a team. Make it high quality and expensive or actually entry level and entry level. It still has contrast based autofocus even though it was announced a month after or a month before the EM5 Mark III which has phase detect autofocus. So like they could have done it. They could have made the perfect camera. It's stylish. It's small. They could have had phase detect and it, it all just became a mess. So I'm putting this uninspiring. It almost went into a crime against photography, but I actually think it's a very good camera. It just could have been better. Like the G100, it could have been better. So if any of these cameras so far have caught your eye, it may be worth checking out MPB. They're a worldwide company, and if you are looking to buy, sell, or trade any of your camera equipment, I think this is the place that you should look first. It's definitely the place where I look first. Selling couldn't be easier. If there's something that you want to sort of shuffle around in your camera lineup, all you need to do is put the model number in, you'll get an instant quote, they will arrange delivery, which is also free. You will get the money in your bank a couple of days later, all done, hassle-free, no haggling, no private selling, it's just done for you. 
It's brill. MPB have been a long-term supporter of this channel and every single week I get comments, DMs and emails from you guys singing the praises of MPB. You tell me what you've bought, you tell me what you've sold, you tell me how good the service is. That's exactly the same experience that I've had with MPB the 100,000 times that I've used them. <laughs> So if you have something to sell or trade or buy, make sure you check them out using the links below. And thanks once again to MPB for sponsoring this video. Quick fire round, the Lumix GX 800. This is a brilliant everyday carry and one of my favorites. It's super duper affordable and feature rich. It's absolutely pants for video, but really good for photos. And it's actually the prize for the Microphone Nerds photo contest for April. So if you want to win a GX 800, I'll put it on screen here. It's a nice orangey boy. It's not the one that I've spray painted. Join the contest by joining my mailing list and good luck. I'm going to stick this in good for certain things because I do think it's wonderful, but I don't think it's better than a lot of the cameras that are higher up in this list. It's banging. Great for photography, but sort of no frills. A very similar proposition, the Lumix GM1, with the exception being that this is the smallest Micro Four Thirds camera ever made, possibly, debatably, the smallest interchangeable lens digital camera ever made. Some people say it's the Pentax Q, some people say it's the GM1. The measurements, to me, say it's the GM1, but whatever. I think this is going to God tier. I think this is what Micro Four Thirds is all about. Small, premium, photocentric, fun colors, really easy to use, easy to take out with you, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But if you're not really bothered about getting the world's smallest anything, the reason I love the GX800 so much is the specs are so, so similar and they're like half the price. So bargain hunting tip for you. And my second spray painted monstrosity is the Lumix GX8. I love this camera because it's very, very similar spec to the Olympus Pen F, which as you can see is in the God tier. This is sort of the Lumix equivalent. You do have a couple of things above and beyond the Pen F. So this is weather sealed and it has an audio input if you want to shoot video. Not the best thing in the world for video, but you can do it. The difference being it's blooming ugly, isn't it? I mean, I mean, before I spray painted mine, <laughs> not as pretty as the, the Pen F. So even though I I prefer it because I think it's easier to use and it's weather sealed and it's more comfortable in the hand. I don't think it has the prestige of the Pen F, so I'm going to put it in blooming brilliant. There's one more camera and it warrants its own category. I'm just going to move up my diagram a little bit. Could have been an email. The OM1 Mark II, largely firmware updates. I don't think it was enough to warrant a Mark II upgrade. I think it screwed over a lot of OM1 users like myself. Mm. Could have been an email. I will be taking no comments at this time. 